on on. He's waiting on the other side now. But he left four sons, great men of God, and they are doing a a song of his father's keeping alive this wonderful Vep Ellis songs. And I want to give you just a, a one song from the Vep Ellis Quartet today. I believe you'll enjoy it. And at this time, I'll turn this over to our announcer and have this beautiful song for you. thank God I want to tell you my friend that's so true I got happy and God saved my soul I won't forget it been about 77 years 67 I mean not 70 but uh, six, about 67 years right now I was saved and I got happy thank God it's so real and so wonderful and I do appreciate so much what God did for me. And I wouldn't give up. I wouldn't turn back. Thank God that we were just about home. We're just about ready, friend, to leave out of here. I want you to take a notice if around your house you're ready to go. How about your children? Have you brought them upright? Have you taught them the fears of this old world? and what it will do for them and that the fact that 
Well, the fact is they won't be going to heaven if they haven't been saved. And and mom and dad's not sure not teaching them today to fear God and recognize his great part in our lives. I do want to be faithful. I want to do what God has called upon us to do and be. And he wants you to tell and make sure you inform your children what it's going to take to get out of here with Jesus and may miss really what's going to come upon us very soon, my friend. You can take this to the bank. It's about time for God's people to leave out. And so I want to keep in mind, I warn my children very often, my Lord is coming. My Lord is coming. Of course, my children are all gone and got families of their own, but I want to tell you, I've got to have them there. I've told God so many times, I don't have a child for that devil to get his hand on. And I have kept that and told God that so much and so many times, I'm all, oh, I want my family around me. I want my family there. So let's be ready. What do you say, my friend? I want to tell you, if you don't tell those children, you don't show them what living for God is, how to shed off this old world and put on God's holiness, then, my friend, they won't be going up there because holiness is the only thing that's going to heaven. And I want to make it, thank God. I am so glad today to be here and greet you again. I had, I did, uh, got to go out to Nashville, Tennessee this week, the International General Assembly of the Church of God is going on out there in Nashville this week, and my, what a, what an experience we had, <laughs> looked like so many, wasn't room for another car in Nashville, and ever street stopped and packed and packed and and we had we had an experience as well as trying to go and be a blessing and help somebody else maybe along the way and and listen and see what good news we could find to bring back and enjoy the Lord. I do thank God for the privilege, my, my, my. I don't know how many thousand we had out there this year, but it was Marvelous! They have built a. They have built a place to have the assembly. A great, great place. A great. I call it a great place. Must be three blocks long, and I don't know how many stories high. It is with the parking lots, and of course, uh, you pay good to get in there if you go. But may the Lord help us to to be what we want to be, what God wants us to be. Had a great crowd at the General Assembly, though, from everywhere. I don't know how many people exactly, but thousands. God bless you today. I want to call your attention because I want to tell you, friend, I don't know how long you think God's going to put up with the way this world is carrying on and the plans in the hearts of evil men today. That is to destroy and to kill all the can. But Jesus still has control, my friend. I want you to know he's still alive and well, and he has control yet today. And I want to give you another scripture. You might have heard this, my friend. For we're living in the last, uh, in the end time, for sure. It says, the day of the Lord. It's talking about much here of the day of the Lord. Now what that is, that day of the Lord, he said it's at hand. He keeps telling us it has, it is at hand. And we'd better take notice to what's going on in the world. But he's saying to the church, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, or of the church. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, 
and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. That is the great church, the thousands, maybe hopefully millions that are in the church recognize the fact there is a God somewhere and we didn't just happen to be around here, my friend, and that God had a plan in all of this. And he's telling us all of these things that are coming that we will escape if we hold out faithful to God. Notice what he said. Blow ye the trumpet, sound an alarm in the church. I want to tell you folks, it looks like the, the church has made a big change. I'm talking about even my own as I view what's happened in our great work trying to carry on in a manner that God is pleased. But looks like now the, the story is we've got the people, but nothing to feed them. We've got the people. For the day of the Lord, for and for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Now he's telling us that there's about, there is no time left at hand. God has gave us the warning so many times. It seems like we're getting worse every day, but now. The church has almost got to say, well, we've got the people, but we don't have nothing to feed them. Listen, my friend, I want you to notice something. Here's a verse of scripture in chapter one of Joel. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. My friend, I want you to know God will just do what he knows to do and what he promised to do is bless his people. But he's not going to bless this old world and make them think that they're going along all right if they're in the church doing nothing and there's been no change in their life. No real salvation have come to their lives. You see, he won't move in and mix and deceive somebody and make them think that they're all right and ready to go to heaven when they haven't got that spirit of God in them that's going to take them to heaven. I want to warn you, I'm not trying to be funny today, my friend, but it's before our eyes. And the day of the Lord is called that seven, that day of tribulation, and it's run by God. He's made some promises here that we cannot uh, put off and push aside. But when that day of the Lord starts, It'll be done by God, and he's outlined what all he will do. The fact is that it's done by God Almighty. Though there's many, many evil men and a world that's in it, and God is sending calamity after calamity. My friend, could I help you to realize there's a plan of God a plan of salvation, not just to think so something or to make up your mind that God was so good that he took his only son and had him, allowed him to go to death. My friend, I want you to know it's, a, it's not something God's going to push aside and forget it, but he is going to move with destruction on mankind. And that seven-year tribulation is about ready to begin. I want to tell you something, friends. You can't afford to go down. You cannot afford to push this thing aside. But God is going to be busy for that seven years. There's one vial right after the other. For the seven-year period that God's into, he's doing it. He's bringing it and allowing 
that great third war to come, the battle of the Armageddon that's going to truly come about. And then people trying to run around today and talk, there's no God. My f friend, let me warn you, I love you. I, I think so much of these boys that's going about today and killing themselves, killing themselves, committing suicide and dropping off according to the word of God right into hell fire that will never be quenched and never stop. It won't let them out no more. Millions of years it'll still be burning. Millions of years it'll still be burning because he said the flame is never quenched. And oh, I want to tell you, friend, I don't want any part of it. I don't want my children there. I want God to have his way in our lives. It's time for a revival in the church. If you're going to go to God in his heaven, you're going to have to have a clean, clean, holy, holy life because he said without holiness, no man can see the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Oh, thank God, thank God for his holiness. I said so many times thinking about what I know. For almost a hundred years now, I've watched the church. I've watched go through those times when you knew that God was being honored and the world was taking notice. <laughs> I remember early way, several years, several years back now, we would go to the General Assembly and our people was dressed and dressed holy and all of these beautiful things about them and the reporters, news reporters, they'd go from place to place in the city finding the, our ladies out shopping and going about some in town and they'd write about them and the, the difference they were in their looks, they could tell they'd been in touch with heaven and they'd changed the way they lived and went showing it to the world they were having to look on. But I want to tell you, friend, today, I don't know, you can't tell them apart. Can't tell whether you're around God, around God's church, or where you might be because of the way today have chose to go. I really have, I guess, a complaint to a lot of our preachers. I really do because it seems like they have struck a point to where even causing our people to just go anyway to the great and sacred house of our God. Go in there like we're going to play ball or something. Dress just about any way they want to. But I want to tell you, my friend, God won't accept it. And we need to know what God's doing. Blow ye the trumpet, sound an alarm. For the day of the Lord is at hand. For it is nigh at hand, he says. Oh, we say we've heard it all of our lives. Yes, we have. But we've never been where we are right now. You see, this is what he told us to look for. This is what he told us we'd see when all of these evil things are falling upon people in the world today and breaking and Santa separating. Our nation has never been so divided. And God said, divided you can't stand. I want to tell you, my friend, we better wake up and know what God said to us. We're his children and he wants us kept. He's going to come one of these days soon when he's about ready to pull out his first vial that he tells about tells us about in Revelation. He's about ready to pull out his first one and put us put this whole world on the way to that great battle. My friend, how about it? Are you saved, really saved today? You know you're saved. 
I know we've had so many reject the Holy Ghost of God, that third person of the Trinity that God has down here today after Christ left and went home. He is here today to take the church through if we let him, if we'll give him his place and let him in our lives, let him fill us with his great and glorious power. For he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Oh, my friend, I want to tell you, it's so real, so mighty, so mighty. I love him, I love him. I can't tell you how I have enjoyed the, the Lord, how I have enjoyed working with him and know that he lives today to bless his children. I want you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed. He said he loves us for God so gay, so loved us. God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Oh, my friend, where are you living today? What are you doing with your children? Don't let them go down there in that fire. Don't let them go to hell. It's going to take it. God tells you to teach them the difference. Moms and dads everywhere, teach them the difference. Teach them there's a God that loves them, a God that will save them if they will come for his salvation. Oh, let him sanctify you holy. If you don't, my friend, you just very apt to never make it. But God gave us a plan. He would take the blood of his son. The Holy Ghost would apply it to our lives and you can make it in him. You can make it. You can make it. There is a God somewhere. Would you let him in today? I don't know, friend. I tell you, this thing's falling on us. I've got a little story I want to tell. Just a beautiful story in a way, but a sad story. I had an experience in Nashville the other day. Uh, my son and I went to have a bite to eat before church at night, and we, my son knew a friend nearby, living nearby, and he called him to come and eat with us before we went to church, and he couldn't get to where we were for a, a stoppage on the highway. Some way he got around and finally came in late with us, but then he didn't know exactly why it was that he was late, but he went back home, and he found out on the way back what had happened. There were excitement and sadness. The a young man wanted to go somewhere beside here and he walked out in front just deliberately walked out in front of a moving truck on the highway and of course it killed him for sure took him right on out of the world but then the law officer that first got there was a young man he was a white man and the truck driver of the one that hit the young man he was a black boy driving that truck, but he was standing weeping, just crying and weeping for such an event that he had hit that boy, but he just walked right before him, and he couldn't help it. So the the policeman, he just walks up there and hugs that old boy so great before everybody. And, well, everybody was all excited because it didn't appear to be any bother in that young white officer because he grabbed that black driver and was hugging his neck and trying to help him. He was weeping so. I want to tell you, friend, this whole world is about ready to close. That is, God's about ready to close the church out and go. Home, and we'll go home. May God bless you as our prayer we've come we've come a long way but we're just about home would you today would you let us tell you something there is a reality there is a God somewhere listen will you I want to tell you dear friend God loves you God loves you 
and I love you too. Would you let him in today? For, forget about this whole world and ask God to forgive you and then to send in his divine plan of salvation in our lives. God help us, it's time for me to go. But I want you to know I love every one of you. And I want to make it to heaven and get right where God wants us to be because Jesus is coming. And I love you and I hope to be back right here some sometime next Sunday. And that is the Lord being our helper and keeper will be back next Sunday. God bless you.